Let's discuss these findings with climate expert Derwood Zelke. Thank you very much for joining us on the News Hour. So, as I said, there are six of our nine boundaries breached. What do you make of this report? We're going the wrong way, aren't we? We are indeed going the wrong way, and we're doing it faster and faster every day. So we've had these reports come out the last few years, and each one is worse than the one before. They show that the planet is very sick. They use the analogy of high blood pressure. Well, indeed, our blood pressure is really high on the planet, and that puts us at planetary risk, where we could end up in the hothouse Earth with a planet that is too hot and has too little biodiversity left, too little of the life-sustaining biophysical systems that we all depend upon, even though we don't pay attention. And in fact, we transgress the boundaries. So yes, this is a very, very bad report. Is there any reverse on this at all? Surely the ozone layer news is a chink of light. The Montreal Pro Protocol is the most brilliant treaty we've ever created. It did put the stratospheric ozone layer on the path to recovery by 2066 now is the date for the complete recovery to pre-1980 levels. That's an incredible success because if we had allowed the fluorocarbons that come from our air conditioning, they used to come from our spray cans, to continue to destroy stratospheric ozone, we would be suffering severe skin cancer, cataracts, suppression of our immune system, damage to crops and to the forest and other sinks that pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So yes, it is an incredible success. And one thing that uh, we all need to remember, it did not just repair stratospheric ozone, but because the same chemicals are very powerful climate pollutants, they also, by being reversed, have done more to protect the climate system than anything else the world has ever done. In fact, the Montreal Protocol has avoided warming that otherwise would have equaled what carbon dioxide causes today. That's a little more than half. So this is a brilliant agreement and we need to replicate it. We need to find inspiration in the Montreal Protocol for other sectoral approaches, including first off, taking out methane. Time is clearly of the essence, but I wanted to ask you, do you think it will take the next generation now to be more proactive on this issue, given that they will be a lot more informed? Well, I certainly hope that's the case. I mean, the young people are the ones who inherit uh, a world that we have failed to protect. I've done this for many, many decades. And I've had some successes, for example, with the Montreal Protocol, but I have failed and my generation has failed to give a safe planet to the next generation. So the young people must become well-educated on this and they must become fierce advocates. This is a matter of life and death for the planet and for literally hundreds of millions of people, including those who are fleeing drought and floods right now and causing the, the migration problem that you were reporting on for Italy. You know, these are, in many cases, climate-driven um, migrants. So, yes, I, and I see great signs with the, the young people. They are becoming the fierce advocates we need. And next week is Climate Week in New York. There will be many young people there. They'll be inside the talks and they'll be outside protesting. They need to be doing both. Climate expert Derwood Zelke, thank you very much for joining us from Washington.